philosophes were writers and critics of the 17th and 18th century European Enlightenment who forged new attitudes favorable to change, championed reform, and flourished in the emerging print culture. Unlike formal philosophers, they sought to apply the rules of reason and common sense to the major institutions and social practices of the day. Three famous philosophes include Voltaire, Montesquieu, and Diderot. Some philosophes were professors at universities. However, most were free agents who met in London coffee houses, Edinburgh drinking spots, the salons of fashionable Parisian ladies, the country houses of reformist nobles, or the courts of the most powerful monarchs in Europe. The philosophes of Eastern Europe were not an organized group and disagreed on many issues while managing to preserve a basic unity. The main group to take interest in the writings of the philosophes were prosperous commercial and professional people of 18th century towns and cities. They had enough income and leisure time to buy and read the philosophes' work. Like the middle class, Philosophes supported the expansion of trade, improvement of agriculture and transport, and the invention of new manufacturing machinery. All philosophes possessed the desire to reform religion, political thought, society, government, and the economy for the sake of human liberty. In the words of historian Peter Gay, the main goal of the philosophes was freedom from arbitrary power, freedom of speech, freedom of trade, freedom to realize one's talents, freedom of aesthetic response, freedom, in a word, of moral man to make his way in the world. After the revolution of 1688, Great Britain was ahead of its time in terms of social reforms, a factor that led to the call for reform throughout Europe. England tolerated all religions except Unitarians and Roman Catholics, who were not even persecuted. Free speech and relative freedom of the press existed. Parliament maintained political sovereignty, and the authority of the monarchy was limited. Other advantages included that the courts protected its citizens from the arbitrary government, and the army stayed small. Domestically and economically, Great Britain displayed far less regulation than France and other continental nations. Reformists on the continent observed that these liberal policies had produced prosperity, stability, and loyal citizens. The Enlightenment was the first major movement in European history to develop a print culture, a culture in which books, journals, newspapers, and pamphlets had achieved a status of their own. The printed word became the chief method for the communication of ideas, especially in Britain. Although books could be expensive, the printed word effectively circulated to reach a broad public. An increase in public and private libraries allowed multiple readers access to the same books. Some authors, such as English essayist, critic, and dictionary author Samuel Johnson, published a collection of essays that had first appeared in newspapers or periodicals. The aristocracy and middle class became increasingly familiar with books and secular ideas. The Spectator, by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele, for example, 
advocated the value of polite conversation and the reading of books. Writing and ideas were frequently discussed in coffee houses and lodges of Freemasons in Britain house members of a secular ideas movement. For the first time, authorship became an occupation. Writers could now earn a living for their work. However, soon a distinction grew between authors of high and low literary culture. Successful authors like Alexander Pope and Voltaire began working for the monarchs, nobles, and the upper middle class, while other authors struggled to find work. The lesser group became angry and in effect spread radical ideas among their lower class audience. The expanding literate public and the growing influence of secular works created an increasingly influential social force. Public opinion, the collective effect on political and social life of views circulated in print and discussed in the home, workplace, and at leisure, changed the cultural and political climate in Europe. Governments and writers could no longer hide their views and policies from the public.